back with more Buffy. This is episode 11 of season 7 and yeah, excited to kind of reach this point because we're going to be halfway through the final season after this episode, which is nuts. Um, but I'm really enjoying the season so far and now we have like the first around is like our proper big bad for the season. Um, and we have Uber Vampire at the minute uh, for Buffy to kind of try and take down. But didn't go particularly well in the last one, but I loved Buffy's speech at the end where she was like, well, let's bring the fight to them. We're all badasses. Uh, if they want a war, we'll give them a war. So that's pretty cool. And they really are setting the stage, I think, for like this big final confrontation. And it, it feels very final at this point. Um, but maybe that's just me in my own head because I know it's the last season that it feels final. But I don't know. I, I feel like the show's also kind of getting at that as well. Um, but either way, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen next and how they're going to tackle all this stuff going on. Because even Principal Wood has some more to him than meets the eye and I don't know where they're going to go with that. But there's a lot to kind of juggle right now that I'm very, very intrigued by. So let's get into the next one. Is this another potential? Oh. Hello. Oh shit! Yes! Try picking on someone my own size. <laughs> yeah! I mean, you're asking for it when you use big ass knives like that. Next time you're attacked. Whoa, whoa, next time. Mm. Is anyone gonna get attacked again? Welcome to the Hellmouth. Oh, I like her. Welcome to the Hellmouth. Nostalgia! Pull a rabbit out of something, or make something float. Ugh, yeah. A pencil. Kennedy, she's the one that goes scampering off. Right into that tour. Scampering off. Already, like, the day after. Is that Felicia Day? Everybody, this is Rona. Hey, Rona. Hey, Rona. Hey, Rona. Hey, <laughs> With that thing guarding the entrance to the first crib, how will Buffy get the spike? I really hate to admit this, but he's not wrong. <laughs> Bell Jox's eye will have any of the answers we're looking for. I'll take anything I can get. Anya, please, we're running out of time. Spike's running out of time. Oh boy. Plus side, when those things scar, they're gonna look really cool. Yes, hello again. She will come for me. Oh boy. I mean, she will. Hello. You can go away. And you hit on me after I had a few. I remember. You wore pink. Those were entrails. I'm sorry, Pat. <laughs> we should skip the nostalgia. <laughs> Jesus. The way you look now, wouldn't touch it for all the kittens in Korea. You're rejecting my offer. What is it with demons and kittens? A leper in this town? I can't even give it away. Come back <laughs> when you are a leper. Um, perhaps it's mine. It's cool to see Giles and Anya paid up again, though. Slayer will not kill all your clientele and burn your establishment out to the ground. <laughs> uh, oh! Hi! Yeah! Another potential arrived in town the day before yesterday. She's at the Sunspot Motel near the highway. The day before yesterday? Why are we just finding out about it now? Bringers killed her watcher before he could tell anyone he sent her. If it wasn't for a particularly powerful seer mm. in the coven, we wouldn't even know about it now. We need all the help we can get. Help? Sure, that, that, that's cool, but... What? Just not sure more scared Slayer wannabes translates as help. I was kind of thinking that. <laughs> we need a training montage. <laughs> They're not ready what, what we for the world here? outside. I've never seen a real vampire in my whole life. Much less slayed one. I've seen one. Well, my watcher once showed me a photograph of one. <laughs> a blurry photograph. That's what I'm saying. Not one of us is remotely prepared the world is to be doomed. activated. They'll just run through each one of us. One after the other. Kind of creepy, huh? All we do is wait around for each other to die. Don't like her attitude. If only we'd... Eve. <gasps> Eve was in our house? 
I was thinking she might have been like the first, like trying to turn them all off it. You. I don't think the Slayer can protect us from the first. <laughs> and you should stop pretending anybody here is your friend. And also, why is she so about saving Spike? He's a worse killer than me by a way lot. Spike was being controlled by the first. Well, she saved you as well. Buffy said if you talked enough, I'm allowed to kill you. <laughs> Not even. <laughs> even. They were just treading water stylistically. Is there a language that you're speaking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so alone. Then maybe you shouldn't have killed your only friend. I hate that. Oh. I don't even know. Drop the mic. I'll be sending a guest over to visit y'all later on tonight. After the sun goes down, of course. Try and make him feel welcome before he rips you all to pieces. Bye. I need to go wash up again. Well, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It cannot be killed. This is nasty. Long after there is That's too many eyes, isn't it? Only the truth of the now and before. Yes, we've all got that. It's called memory. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure about Willow doing the hocus pocus again? Mm -hmm. I mean, last time she. Yeah, no, we don't have a lot of choices. And what if that? She can do it. What if that monster gets through? Then you're all dead. Deal. Rest Deal. in peace. Fight, you mean. How are we supposed to do that? And with what? With whatever it takes. Right? Buffy, you fought the Torah, hon. I like her attitude. Almost killed you. Can we do that? Surrender. I mean, so it won't kill us. What? The time has come. Mm. Willow and Xander aren't slayers, they do a good job of this kind of thing. If this will do any good, I mean, what's the point? Fight with your bare hands, then. I have a right to defend myself, if you say so. <laughs> Better than nothing. Big, scary Willow. That's something I'd almost like to see. No, you wouldn't. Said almost. <laughs> it needed to I mean, I enjoyed and not enjoyed it, to be Last fair. Last time I tried using magic. <laughs> yeah, I can growl too. You're not special. Tapio impedimental. Yeah. yeah. It's working. I don't know. She can't hold it. What do we do? What do we do? Run. Everybody run. I don't understand how Buffy's death mucked up the whole Slayer mojo. You know, it's not like she hasn't died before. It's, it's not because she died. Oh. No, Jokes says I was quite clear about that. In its enigmatic way, it's, it's because she lives again. No, it's our fault. The world would have been better off if Buffy had just stayed dead. Oh, I don't know about that. You couldn't have known, but at the same time, yeah. That's a thinker, that one. We're splitting up? Is that wise? Is that wise? I know a place. Hmm. Any water? Yeah. Oh. Did he go after all the others? Don't make a sound. That's the plan? Spread out? That thing is gonna kill Buck. You got a better idea? Jesus. Why do we know it's killing her right now? Or it could just skip her. Oh, let's rename the more negative Nancy, for God's sake. Honestly, I'm rooting for this fucking thing at this point. Kill all the potentials. I mean, I get they've all been thrown into this and they don't choose their destiny and stuff, but come on. There's clearly a plan, I think. Have nightmares about. Hmm. Right now, you and me are going to show them why. Yes! You planned this. Letting the barrier fail, bringing us here. You and Buffy. Honestly, mm. you stake that thing. Willow, can you hear me? Yeah? 
We're losing them. We can't let that happen. I have an idea. Grab Xander. Xander. I thought that was weird when they I've got a slave in the under him to get spiked in that cave. <laughs> <laughs> Wee. Oh. oh. Nice. We'll be the ones left standing. Here endeth the lesson. <laughs> Some of you may die, but that is a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Hmm, alright, shady bitch. Is this real, Buffy? Hey! Oh, it's well it ends well. Until next time. Okay, uh, I really love that episode. I'm, I mean, we're halfway through the season now. Uh, we have eleven episodes of Buffy left. That's terrifying. What an awful thought. Um, but yeah, I'm really gelling with this season so far. I do have to say, um, I really enjoy kind of everything that they've done with it so far. And I know there's still literally half a season left to go, so it could all go to shit. But I think this has been a really solid first half, um, and I'm excited to see where they're going to go with it. I think a lot of it could lean into all those potentials. Like, if they continued to have that attitude that they had in this episode, I think they would really grate on me and piss me off. Um, but, yeah, I'm actually really enjoying the story of the season, and I'm excited to see where they're going to go with it next. Um, where to begin? Um, well, we dealt with the uber vamp at last, and I did enjoy the idea of Buffy, Willow, and Xander kind of forming this plan away from everyone else, all the negative Nancys, um, to take it down. And then, I mean, Buffy giving another little speech at the end of the episode, it felt a bit like the same as last time, but not quite up there. Um, which is kind of odd, but I, I imagine that's maybe, you know, Buffy was giving this speech and everyone in that room was kind of in a different place to where they are at the end of this episode, I guess. Um, so it's just showing the progress that these people are making because we've had some new Slayers since then, or new potential Slayers anyway. and. You know, Buffy could have given that awesome speech in the last episode, but people may have still been like, oh, I'm not really sure about this. But I feel like actually them getting to watch Buffy kill the uber vampire thing um, can get them completely on side because they, they were doubting her a bit in this episode. And, oh, we need weapons. How are we going to do this? And yeah, they were being influenced by the first in the guise of Eve, so I can't entirely hold it all against them. But have a better attitude, people. You know, I get that they didn't ask to be these potentials, they didn't ask to have people come and hunt them and stuff like that, they didn't ask to watch some of their watchers die. I'm sure it was all very traumatic, but at the end of the day, this is what it is, and it's either step up or you die. So they just weren't having the most helpful attitude. Um, I think it was Kennedy is her name, the one Willow was talking to near the start. Um, I actually quite liked her approach to things and her attitude to things, I wish is what they all had. Um, so that was pretty cool of her. Um, and I mean, she should have let Willow sleep at the start. Like, she was just like, I want to go to bed. Like, stop fucking talking. <laughs> but, um, aside from that, I, I really liked her a lot. And I liked Rona in her initial few scenes. But then she started to get all negative Nancy and doubting Buffy and stuff. So I kind of went off her a bit. Um, and yeah, seeing Felicia Day was fun, though. I like Felicia Day, so... Seems she's going to be sticking around for a bit as one of the potentials, which I'm happy about. Um, and yeah, the idea of like more potentials maybe arriving, maybe some are going to get killed as time goes on. There's still half a season. I can't imagine all of them making it to the very end of the season, I will have to say. So sorry in advance to whoever like, pops their clogs. Um, 
But I do like that idea. I think it's quite fun and a good way of exploring in a twisted way the legacy of the Slayer because it's actually like the future of the Slayer. So I, I do like the idea of we've seen Slayers in like years gone by. We've seen like the current Slayer. We've seen the other current Slayer because they still around as well. Um, and we also have like the future Slayers that aren't Slayers. Yeah, I actually really like that idea. I think it's really cool. Um, I just I just wish some of them, well, all of them didn't have such a bad attitude to this. It's like Dawn had a very good point, I think, when she was like, are they really help? Are, you know, all the help we can get. And they're all just like scared and terrified and doubtful and having the worst attitude in this situation. It's not exactly help. So I liked that. I like that Dawn pointed that out because it's a very good point and I was thinking it myself. And they're just going to get in the way if they continue to not, you know, step up to the fold. So that was cool. And I did enjoy, you know, the brief moments we had of Dawn in this episode, particularly um, her shutting down Andrew from time to time. It was quite a delight to watch. Um, and again, Andrew is a lot more tolerable when it's just him. Like, so much more tolerable. Um, so I think it was just the fact that there were three of them, three, like, very similar characters in that way together. It was just like, ugh. But... I'm enjoying a bit of what he's bringing to it. I do feel like some of his scenes go on a bit too long and the joke runs out very quickly in the scenes he's in. Um, and a couple of times he does, like, they cut to him making, like, some kind of remark during a fight and stuff. I'm like, we, we didn't need that. That just kills the flow of it. Um, but regardless, I'm enjoying him infinitely more now he's just on his own. Um, so that's definitely a big positive that I'm going to focus on. So... Having him around, I feel like they're going to set him up to do something. Like, he's actually going to be really useful later on down the line. Otherwise, it, you know, it would be like, what's the point of just keeping him around, having him tied up? Um, so I feel like he's going to know something that maybe will be useful in a way that even maybe he doesn't know about yet. Um, but it's going to be a waiting game, I imagine. Because, again, we still have half the season left to go. But I'm actually enjoying Andrew, and I can't believe it. Um, yeah, they just need to make his scenes a bit snappier because they do repeat the same joke again and again and again in his scenes. But, yeah. I'm still liking him a lot more. So that's good. Um, and Willow doing the magic again. I like that they kind of readdressed that and she was having like these nerves about it. I mean, if it was the plan, they planned for her to kind of like fail um, like doing the shield thing for a bit so they could like lead the uber vamp away to this like battle they'd set up you know i don't know why she was privately like practicing and being like oh you've got this you've got this so they could have that scene with her and kennedy um but you know i guess you still need to get the practice in to at least pretend to fake it correctly i suppose um but still it was nice to see them address willow's fear of like getting back into the magic and stuff because of how badly it went wrong last season so i enjoyed them addressing that again um and part of me wishes it wasn't like part of their plan for that night. She meant to it not to actually properly last um, because then it could really show a lot of progress for her. And that could be quite a healthy journey for her, maybe recovering from magic and being able to use it in a positive way, which to be fair, she's never, you know, I love Willow, but she's never actually more often than not, she hasn't exactly positively used magic, even in the early seasons before Dark, where there was a thing, you know, she was like, oh, I'm going to wipe Xander's memory of us, um, of our romantic feelings for each other. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, I'm going to curse Oz and Veruca. Um, fucking Veruca. Um, and, you know, I'm going to wipe uh, Tara's memory of our fight. So she's never particularly used magic in a very positive way, but hopefully maybe that's a good arc for her for this season, finding a better use for it. Um, but maybe that's a thing for a future time and just not right now because they have this plan to sort out. But still, I enjoyed it. Um, and I liked the twist with Eve actually having been dead for a few days and it was like one of the first trying to influence all the other slaves and turn them away. So again, you can't entirely blame the potentials because the first was kind of whispering in their ear in that sense. But I did like that twist. I did think she was being a bit suspicious when she was like having such a negative attitude. Then they did the reveal. So that was really cool. And again, when Buffy, Willow and Xander kind of all scooted off and they weren't saying anything, I was like, that's a really weird interaction. But it turns out they were actually like communicating like psychically or whatever. Uh, so a few moments like that I thought were really well set up in this episode to have a cool payoff. Um, and 
we had Giles and Anya go off, have their little quests. Those two have always been quite funny together, so I enjoyed them being paired up again. Um, going to like that weird eye thing. I don't know how I feel about the eye thing. It's an interesting idea, but I don't know. It looked a bit cartoony, I think, the design of that. It seemed like that would be something like an anime, not maybe... You know, I think the concept of that design is really cool, but maybe making it like an actual thing and an actual like prop, it doesn't look quite as like... It just looked a bit... I don't know. A bit pantomime I guess, is the word, but also it's like loads of eyes, so you wouldn't exactly see that in a pantomime, but you know what I mean. Um, but I like that they used it as a means to get some answers, and it seems that Buffy coming back from the dead um, caused this um, the first to be able to get involved or take a chance or something. And there's a lot to that I'm not sure about. I imagine they will further define it properly, because, you know, Buffy did die before in season one and came back. So why is her being alive again not important then, but her being alive again now is why the first could exploit that? Is it because, you know, this time she came back through, like, dark magic and stuff, as opposed to Xander giving her CPR? Maybe it's that. But at the same time, you know, Buffy isn't actually, like, the proper current Slayer. That's Faith. So why... Could they still exploit it? It's a, it's a weird thing. I imagine it's just some humbo jumbo that they can explain away. Um, so I'm a bit confused about that, but I do like the idea of them going back to, you know, events from seasons past as to why the first now could like make their move. I quite like how, you know, events from seasons and seasons and go can still have ripple effects in the plot in later seasons. I always like it when shows do that that aren't afraid of like their history and their previous seasons and stuff like that. Um, and they'd already shown that this season, you know, because they brought the first back, who were literally in it four seasons ago on a different network. So, and like even like a one-off episode as well. It wasn't like they were bringing back this huge, really popular villain, you know. It's not like they brought back the gentleman who I always see like associated with Buffy, um, and they often they clearly they do seem to be like one of the more popular villains. Um, you know, it was something from Amends. So. I like that Buffy's never really been afraid of that. And they always, often they play it as a joke and they're like, oh, you know, are, are you like a giant praying mantis? And Xander said that to a few people, you know, he's been with since. Um, but this was like a genuine actual ripple effect from an, an earlier season, which I really enjoyed. So that was all fun. And I liked the Giles and Anya kind of banter with that weird demon guy to get him to open the portal. Anya's always a lot of fun in that regard as well. Um, and then we had Spike being tied up for most of the episode, being tortured again, but powering through it, being a bit of a trooper there. And I loved the kind of reveal at the end that it was actually the real Buffy there to save him, and they walked out together at the end. Um, so I, I guess Spike's back in the fold, and I liked, you know, Buffy was always trying to find a way to save Spike in the end. Um, so that does feel like the first, like, kick in the teeth for the first, so we're actually kind of making some progress on there, you know, normally... Um, the first is the Messer, and Buffy and Friends are the Messies, but they switched it around in this episode, so that's cool, as we reach the halfway mark, you know, there's like that chance that this group really can fight back, which I enjoyed a lot. Um, but yeah, overall, I really, really loved this episode, and I, I really like this whole idea of, like, the first and the potential Slayers. Um, I mean, a lot of them did get on my nerves in this one, with their negative Nancy attitudes, but hopefully... They had been one round now, and that was a bit of a blip, because I can't entirely blame them, because they were a bit manipulated. They don't entirely understand what's going on. They're scared. They've seen people they love been murdered or whatever in front of them. Um, they had to run to Sunnydale, and they're, you know, they're not in a familiar location or whatever. But, yeah, they still didn't have the right attitude, I would say, in my opinion. And they were being a bit dead weighty, and Dawn had a point. Um, so there was that. But aside from that, I'm really liking that story, and I can't wait to see... We're going to take it. Um, but halfway through the final season. 11 Buffy reactions left, which is not so. But we are taking a break from Buffy for now because um, we're going back to Angel for a bit because it's been a while since we went back to Angel. I believe it's episode 7 next of Angel to do. So 7 and 8 of Angel are the other two in this cycle. But yeah, halfway through the season and I'm loving it so far. I can't wait to see how they're going to continue that story, but that's for another time, because it's back to Angel for a bit, but yeah, really, really good episode, I really loved it, 
can't wait to see what's going to happen next. But until my next reaction, thanks for watching.